What's up guys, my name is Terry Anderson. I'm a minister from the state of Mississippi, and this is my story. I'm going back about 10 years in my life. I'm 26 now, so I'm going back to the time of when I was 16. Most people that knew me thought I was a pretty good kid. My mom was a nail tech. My grandmother and my aunts are all beauticians. So we had a lot of people coming into the beauty shop. A lot of big name people would come to the beauty shop. Oh, Peyton Manning's mom used to come. Chief Martin. Miss Bonnie still comes. But the thing is, they saw what I wanted them to see. They didn't see the backstory. Like I said, about 10 years ago when I was 16 years old, me and my mom and dad used to sit around on Saturday nights. We'd rent a bunch of movies and we'd sit around and watch movies all night. Well, one Saturday night, I end up with this nosebleed. And we had a hard time getting it to stop. We finally got it stopped, and Sunday, uh, Saturday night ended, of course, and Sunday morning come around. And at the time, we were going to church, but we wasn't really into church a whole lot. Now, my family's a Christian family, but Sundays was a lot of the time the only time we had at the house. So we didn't go to church every Sunday. But we got up, and that nosebleed come again. Well, we finally got it to stop, and it just kind of kept sneaking its way back in all throughout the day. Well, my mom said, you know, if it didn't stop, then Monday morning, instead of me going to school, we was going to the doctor. Monday morning come around. I was up getting ready to, you know, go to school, and I sneezed. And guess what? That nosebleed come back. So we ran down, saw the doctor, and while I was sitting in the doctor's office, I'm not going to speak his names. I don't want him to get in trouble. He told me, and he checked my blood pressure, and he told me to go and eat a good lunch. So we went to Subway, you know. After we ate Subway, we come back to his office. He checked my blood pressure again. He said, that's what I wanted to be sure, and I wanted you to get you a good meal. You're going in the hospital. 16 years old, being put in the hospital, I was scared out of my mind. Well, my mom come in with me, and they drew blood, done all this different stuff. I basically become a pincushion. Well, I'll never forget... They was going to start my IV. Well, I was probably the biggest chicken when it come to needles, IVs, anything. Well, my dad was standing next to me, and this guy went to stick the needle in my arm, and I about come up off this bed. My dad caught my left arm when I was fixing to give this dude a hook to his head. Well... They started the IV, and later that night, they come walking in, and they checked my blood pressure again, and I don't remember what the top number was. It was like 160. The bottom number was 106. I was in stroke level. A few minutes later, they come walking in with a little white pill. They started my own blood pressure medicine. I didn't know what that meant. You know, I knew I was sick, but I didn't know why. I went to school and was telling some of my friends about it, and I told my teachers, you know, I thought everything would be normal. You know, nothing would change. Yeah, I had to start taking medicine, but why would that change? Anything else about me? Then it happened. All of my friends that I thought were my friends didn't want to have anything to do with me because I was sick. They would make plans, they'd meet up, and they'd go out and have a good time. I wouldn't know anything about it until after the fact. Fair would come around, and then the Shelby County Fair is probably one of the biggest fairs in the United States. It's called Mississippi's Giant House Party. My friends would go out there and ride rides. Well, I couldn't ride the rides because of uncontrolled high blood pressure. So they wouldn't invite me to go out with them. I was in a pretty down time then, you know, I felt like everybody was turning against me. The only ones I had in my life that had anything to do with me was my parents and grandparents and my cousins. 
What I'm fixing to tell you, most of my family has never even heard. I kept this secret for 10 years, y'all. My mama didn't even know about this until this year when I spilled it at church. And I don't know why I spilled it at church. I just felt it was time for me to tell somebody. But there was one night, and I don't even know if my dad knows this. So, Daddy, if you're watching this and I hadn't told you this yet, I'm sorry. I want you to know I love you, and I hate for you to find out this way. I may have to talk to him before I post this video. But I was sitting in my room late one night, and I mean, it was like close to probably midnight, 1 o'clock or so. And I got my hunting knife. I held that hunting knife to my throat, ready to slit my throat, and I couldn't do it. So I held it to my stomach, ready to slice my stomach open. I couldn't do it. Finally, I turned it around to the back to the serrated edge and held it to my wrist, ready to pull. It's like when I held it to my wrist, my whole body went numb. I couldn't feel anything. I pressed it against my wrist. And when I felt like I was fixing a pull, I felt this force reach down and grab my arm and pull it back. I didn't understand why. I was confused. I was depressed. And I was ready to commit suicide. I sat there and I thought about it for a long time and I don't remember if I ever went to sleep that night. The next day, I got up. I didn't tell a soul about what I had done the night before. I walked through the house, I acted like everything was normal. I would joke and play around with everybody who would joke and play around with me. Nobody knew that I was suicidal. When the days to come, I went to my grandmother's house. My grandmother was a pretty strong Christian. She believed in God. She believed everything about him. And she would pray all the time. I mean, she would just stop in the middle of whatever she was doing and pray. She'd done hair for 50 years, and there was times that she would stop and pray for the person she was working on their head. Well, I went to her house, and she pulled me to the side. She said, TJ, we need to talk. And I thought, okay. I didn't know what it was about. Well, she sat me down, and she said, is everything okay? And I remember thinking, what's up, Mama? What, what are you talking about? She said, I know what you've done. She said, I know you held that knife to your wrist. Y'all, you could have put me down with a feather. I had not told a soul. So how did my grandmother know I was suicidal? She looked at me and she said, God had told her that I held a knife to my wrist. Now y'all, I want you to think about this. I was not a Christian at the time. I knew that some people were Christians. I knew about the Bible, but I didn't believe it. I didn't believe a bit of it. But when she pulled that and told me, she described the way I held the knife. Y'all, I had not even told her about it. She said, I don't want you to ever do that again. She asked me if I had told Mom and Daddy, and I told her no. She said that she was not going to tell them that I would have to tell them myself. I struggled with suicide for a few days after that. I tried to learn how to do the hangman's noose, and it would never seem to work for me. But y'all, she caught me. She set me down, and she led me to the Lord. I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to believe that there was something bigger than me. 
I didn't want to believe that there was a God. Because my mindset was, if there was a God, why would he allow a 16-year-old to have troubles that a 65-year-old person should have? I become petty, prideful. But when he got a hold of me, he changed my life. Suicide is a very real thing. People struggle with suicide all the time. I struggled with it even after I had become a Christian. I gave my life to the Lord with my grandmother setting me down and explaining to me everything that I had not told a soul. She explained it in detail. That same year, I was baptized, and she handed me a Bible. And that Bible goes everywhere with me. This little black, ultra-slim, King James Version Bible. People at my church see me with it every Sunday. It's gone through hospitals, nursing homes, adult daycare centers. It's gone through colleges, Walmart. I've even preached in beauty shops and dirt cheap, telling everybody, you're not alone. But the biggest thing for me was how could someone know that I was ready to commit suicide if I hadn't told them? I struggled with depression for a long time. I was called fat. I was bullied in school. It kind of built on the foundation of meanness from others. Y'all, there are people in this world that will do anything and everything they can to break you down so that they feel better about their self. But I found that if I love myself for who I am, and stop worrying about what other people think of me, my life has turned around. I'm happier. And I want to help others. But the way to help somebody is not trying to force them into something. They must want help before you can give them help. With suicide, you have to be extremely careful. They're ready to end their life. And they'll take you down to be able to accomplish their goal. But y'all, there's a number out there that can help them. If they want help and you're not sure how to give it to them, send them this number. It's 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK. People are ready to talk to you. If you are having suicide thoughts, people are ready to talk to you. Comment down below. Contact me. I'm on Facebook. My name on Facebook is Terry L. Anderson Jr. If you are having problems, contact me. I want to help. These people on this website, it's the Suicide Prevention Lifeline. At 1-800-273-8255, they will help you. I guarantee that there are people out there who love you. People who've never met you love you. There's no reason to feel that you are unloved by somebody. If you need a friend, contact me. I love everybody. I don't care if you're black or white, Hispanic, Muslim, Jewish, atheist. I don't care. I will be your friend. In, in college, I sat down with four group, uh, four other people, and we would sit, we would play the GameCube, we would play dominoes, we'd play cars. We didn't care. One of them was a Jew. Others were Christian. Some were Muslims. We didn't speak about religion. One was an atheist. We didn't speak about religion. We come together to have fun. That is what we should strive for in our life. To find people, even if they are different from us, and have fun in life. Y'all, life is an adventure. We have to take that first step. If you end your life, you're not going to be able to take that first step. 
All you have to do is reach out to somebody. They will help you. The one thing I want to get out to everybody is that we are a light in this world. Y'all, this world is filled with darkness. Each one of us who is willing to help somebody who has overcome something in the past, such as depression or suicide, or if you've been addicted to methamphetamines, if you have been addicted to alcohol and you've overcome it, you are a light to somebody else who's stuck in darkness. All we have to do is let our light shine. And let others see what we have accomplished. Let others know what has happened in our life. If we can do that, we can help somebody. Y'all, people are dying every day. From murder. From suicide. From overdosing and drugs. And it saddens me to know that somebody's life was ended too soon over something that means nothing. What are you going to get out of killing somebody? A little bit of pleasure for now? It's not worth it. If you have hatred in your heart, it's not worth it. It's bringing you down. They're living their life to the fullest. You are trapped by hatred in your heart. Let go. Let it go. It's not worth it. When you find love, love is worth it. You can show love to somebody who is mean to you. I do it each and every day. I get pushed to the point sometimes where I'm ready to pull someone's hair out, but I still say yes ma'am or no ma'am, yes sir or no sir to them. I try to show them respect, even if they don't show me any at all. Y'all, we have to overcome our hardships and get our hardships out of the way and bring love in. That's the goal for me. That's the goal of this video is to let you know you're not alone. There are people out there who've been through what you're going through and they're willing to help. As I said before, I'm willing to help. Find me on Facebook. Find me on Twitter. I'll help you. All you have to do is ask. Now, I'm not going to waste my time with somebody who doesn't want help. Why? Because if they don't want it, it's not going to happen. All I can do is pray for them. But if they want help and they, sh they tell me that they want help, I'm going to do everything humanly possible to get them help. And I'm willing to help you. Anyone and everyone who's watching this video, if you have a suicidal thought in the back of your mind, let someone know. Let us know. We are willing to help you. There is people out there who want you to live. Okay? And I hope and pray that you will reach out to them. Thank you.